I recently had this startling realization about Oreo cookies, and it was that Oreo cookies are actually a test. Now, we've all known that Oreo cookies are a test of willpower, right? When you open it, the test is, can I eat one or two of these, or will I eat this entire sleeve? And for me, it's always the entire sleeve. But the realization that I just recently came to was that Oreo cookies are also a test of sanity because only a crazy person would eat an Oreo cookie the way that an Oreo cookie is packaged, right? Only a crazy, insane psychopath would take that cookie out and just go, yeah, I think I should eat it just like this and just all the way through wafer, icing, wafer, whatever. That, that's, no, that's not how you're supposed to do it. You're supposed to take it apart. Some people, you know, lick it from there. Some people dunk it in milk. That depends on what your culture is, I guess. But only a psychopath would eat it the way that it's packaged. And that's a test. And tests are important in life. I know that a lot of us don't like tests. A lot of us hate taking tests. But a test is a really good tool because it shows you exactly where you are at. If you watch somebody eat an Oreo cookie the way that it comes in the package, you know right away that person cannot be trusted. In fact, that's why I always recommend first date you ever go on with somebody, bring an Oreo cookie, you'll figure out real quickly should you invest any time into this relationship. Tests are helpful because they show you where you're at in life. It's easy to sit in a classroom and fake it. It's easy to play the part of a student and look like you're taking in information, but a test will show you real quick how much of this information actually stuck, how much of this information was actually processed and retained, and how much of that was just you faking it. And a lot of life is like a test, especially the hard parts of life. See, the hard parts of life reveal to us exactly where we are. They reveal exactly how much we've actually learned on this journey and how much we were faking. It's easy to look like a great person when everything's going well, but a crisis is always going to reveal your character. A crisis will always reveal your character because a crisis will show where do you fall on this spectrum? And right now we are in the middle of a crisis with COVID-19, with the coronavirus, with the national shutdown, unemployment's at an all-time high, our friends and family aren't able to be with us, we can't find toilet paper anywhere in the world. There are so many things going on right now that just scream crisis. And that really should be screaming test. This is a test for us. Right now it's a test of our resilience, it's a test of our patience. It's a test of our resolve. But it's also a test of where do you fall on the spectrum of selfishness to selflessness. All of us fall somewhere on that spectrum from purely selfish to purely selfless. And a crisis like this reveals it real quick. Because you have to start asking yourself, how have I been handling this? Am I mostly concerned with how this has inconvenienced me? Am I mostly concerned with my own needs during this time? Have I mostly been complaining about all the ways that this has made my life hard? Or am I thinking about the people in my life who are worse off than I am? Am I thinking about friends and family members who might be immunocompromised? Am I thinking about people who I know have lost their job and probably don't have savings? Am I thinking about the people in my life who are at highest risk of this virus? Or am I just looking out for myself? I watched this video once where this comedian named Chris McCausland um, was telling this story and Chris McCausland is blind. He can't see anything at all. And he was telling a story about a neighbor who had moved in and Chris lives on the second floor and the neighbor had moved in below him. And, and for like two months, Chris thought that this neighbor was a jerk because every day he would go outside, he, when he heard the guy come in, he would hear the guy's car door shut and he would walk out onto his balcony and he would say, hey, how's it going? And the guy never answered him one time, just blew him off, walked into his own house. And it wasn't until months later that Chris realized that the neighbor was deaf. So every day, a blind man is yelling out hello to a man who can't hear him. And every day that man would wave at Chris and Chris would not see it. And so both of them went through their lives thinking that the other person was a jerk. And it took them months to figure out what was going on and they had a great laugh about it and it's a really, really funny story. But they were only able to, re to understand what was happening when they recognized, oh, I'm looking at this through my own limitation. And when they started asking instead, how is this other person experiencing this situation? For years, I've told the story on stage about how I grew up and I felt like I didn't have any friends. 
I went to this tiny little private school. I didn't fit in there. I was always bouncing off the walls. I was the kid that got kicked out of class because I was talking too much and I needed a lot of attention. And I never really felt like I fit in there. I never really felt like I had any friends. And in kindergarten and first and second and third grade, I contemplated killing myself because I thought I don't fit into this world and it seems like everyone else would be happier if I wasn't here anymore. And what saved my life was in fourth grade when this new kid showed up. His name was Zach. Actually, his name is still Zach. He never changed it. And Zach changed my life. He became my best friend and everything changed. And every time I tell that story, I get messages from people saying, Kyle, I'm in that position. I'm 15, 16, 17. I, I'm at a new school or I've been at this school for a while, but I don't have anybody. I don't have any friends. How do I find my Zach? And for the longest time, I didn't know how to answer that question because my Zach found me. I don't know how to answer that question, but I, what I realized over time was that sometimes the best thing that we can do is to put our own needs on the back burner because those things are out of our control. I can't control when a friend is gonna come into my life, but I can control when I can go be a friend in someone else's life. And so sometimes the best thing that we can do is look for opportunities to go meet the needs of people who are in a situation like ours. When you know how hard it is to be lonely, you should go look for other people who are lonely and try to make them less lonely. You shouldn't look to find your Zach. You should look to be a Zach for someone else. And so many times what happens when you stop looking out for yourself and you start looking out for the needs of others is that you ultimately find that your needs get met too. It's a very roundabout, illogical, nonsensical way of solving a problem, but it makes just as much sense as eating an Oreo cookie, not the way that it's packaged. We are in a test right now. This crisis is a test. And some of us have been passing it and some of us have been failing it. But the good news is the test isn't over. We haven't reached the moment yet where the teacher says, okay, everybody put your pencils down. And so there's still time to change it. So if you've been in a situation where you've only been thinking about yourself and you've only been thinking about how hard this is for you, I would encourage you to take a step back and think about how can I help someone else during the situation? How can I make this less about me and more about my community? And I think you'd be surprised at how much better that will make your life too. Thanks.